Theo up yet? Because I don't see Tim. Yeah. Do you guys Tim? see Tim? No, Tim's I don't see him. Blue Microsoft dude. Well, he'll be sorely missed. Anyway, welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name is Ben. I'm here to answer your shooting questions. On deck today, uh, Grandmaster Matt. Hi. President Foley. Yo. Yes. And <laughs> Grandmaster Tim. Speaking of uh, President Foley, did you like the uh, plane I found for uh, USPSA Chair Force One, the plane? Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to need some paint. I I saw <laughs> guys I I saw a paint, a, a, an aircraft at the Air and Space Museum that was perfect for Mike. It was this really dumb looking little Cessna thing that was painted pink. It was beautiful. <laughs> I was like uh, the president rolling around in that thing. That'd be pretty cool. Mike didn't think it was as funny as I did though. Did you, Mike? No. No, you're se you've got a beard. You're secure enough in your manhood with the beard that you could. I think you could pull off a pink plane. Sure, why not? You'd be like, hey, pink is the new blue. That's it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> or, or whatever. You right. thought this through way too much. What? I had I, I said dated you. a girl <laughs> once who told me that that oh, pink oh, was the new God. blue, and I looked at her like. Uh, that was one of those moments where it's like if there wasn't like a sexual relationship with this person, like this conversation would go a lot differently. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. She... Tim's okay. really freaking me out over there. What? Tim, he's freaking me out with no video. Now who knows what he's doing, right? Ooh. What? Probably dry firing. That was the dry fire joke, not a not a masturbation joke, Hopkins. I didn't think of that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got I got an email that, among other things, you guys this guy's asking. Uh, he has some show ideas. Some of them were good, even. <laughs> so you learn a lot when uh, coaching others. Uh, so he wants to know <laughs> about the top five things we've learned. I don't know if I, I I could rank like the top five things I've learned while coaching others, but. All of you guys are uh, coaches. I think Mike is probably the most experienced, right, Mike? I would say I'm the most experienced. I coach? You that. coach people pretty regularly, don't you? I have. No, I mean I coach people more frequently, but you're way right. older. So I think over time, <laughs> <laughs> over two, time, two for two now. <laughs> <laughs> This one was less than a minute in the show. Oh, right. man. <laughs> you called him old. He, I'm, I'm not calling him nothing. <laughs> I made fun of his beard and his... Not even really making fun of his age, more making light of. Anyway, uh, so my, what I'm saying... I'm, I'm trying to give Mike some credentials for being an experienced shooting coach because Mike... Fire. Just people are pretty regularly, you dickheads. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> All right, Smarty Pants Hopkins. What would you say, if you had to pick one thing that really jumps out at you that you've learned yourself coaching other people? People aren't going fast enough. Like, they think they're going fast, like, in movement and everything, but they're not. They can and go way faster when they're holding a the gun. So you would apply that. I mean, that applies to your own shooting as well, obviously, right? Yeah, everybody. I mean, everybody, I think, can do that. Yeah, everyone feels like a fucking ninja, like they're going 100 miles an hour. Yep. And then you see yourself on video, and you're like, really? Yep. <laughs> That's what that looks like? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. It felt way cooler than that. That's okay. why it doesn't look good on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get them all in there. What? That's really why it doesn't look good on TV. It, you know, it's it, it's it's epic to those of us who love it and are around it to see a really smoke and run. But then when you go back and watch people's videos, it's like watching paint dry. Yeah. Well, maybe you're a little jaded, Mike. <laughs> a lot. Because <laughs> you watch somebody shoot and they're like going through the stage going, pew, 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 pew. 
<laughs> you're like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> you're the audio, even just to hear you do that. <laughs> <laughs> the audio is excellent, right? Yeah. All right, Mike. Can you think of a thing that really jumps out at you that you learned yourself? While coaching someone else? Yeah. I, I got a couple of short things to say about that. One of them is sometimes I, I have someone who struggles with something that I don't struggle with. And in, in learning what they're doing, trying to help them through it, uh, sometimes I find uh, analogies in the understanding of, of what they're doing that I hadn't quite put together before. So, so sometimes I learn how to address a certain thing by learning how it appears to, to, to the other person. It's kind of weird, you know, wh whatever their insight is. But, um, you know, it, a specific skill uh, that I've learned while coaching someone else? I don't know. I mean, respond, whatever, any way you'd want to respond to it, right? Right. So... <clears throat> You, you, you can you can reinforce a lot of things by seeing someone else do it wrong or do it right, but, um, you know, I mean, here, here's another one. Okay, so one thing I've learned for sure by, by, by coaching a lot of people is that people are often focused on, oh, wow, I've got to get better at, 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 at this particular skill, and they don't even know how to pull the trigger. So if a guy comes to me and he says, Wow, man! He said, "I've been watching your footwork, and it's great. You know, can you teach me that?" Yes, but first I got to teach you how to not get 27 misses on a 32-round field course. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it reinforces itself over and over again. Is that people don't know how to shoot, and they think that you're that, that you're beating them on the other aspects. And if you can't shoot, the rest of it's a done deal. There's no reason to be good at footwork if you can't deliver hits on target. I like it. All right, Tim, in sitting here li listening to this, is there something that jumps out at you? Uh, kind of two things. Uh, one, the, 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 probably the number one thing I've learned while coaching others is just how to have patience. Um, you know, everybody kind of learns at different rates. So, you know, some people pick up material or pick up, uh, you know, instruction a lot faster than others. Others, it seems like you, you've got to be able to, kind of like Mike said, be able to speak their language to give them a breakthrough. But it's like once you finally break that language barrier where you can actually start breaking things down to them, then the, the learning becomes endless. Um, secondly, I think people approach USPSA with, you know, trying to go fast in the wrong areas at the expense of going slow in the wrong areas. You know, for instance, somebody will really focus on, like, oh, man, I shot, you know, 15 splits on that target. But never mind that the target, the three, you know, three yards away from it, they had, like, a, you know, a 50 split on, or a 50 transition on. I don't, so, dude, did you hear a 15 split, though? That shit sounds fast. Well, well yeah, it sounds fast. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of neat when you can open the student's eyes, you know, demonstrating what 15 splits with a 50 transition looks like and then showing them what a 20 split and a 20 transition looks like. You know, and like, okay, you ask them what sounds faster. Of course, everybody raises their hand and says, oh, yeah, this, this, the first one, the splits. You know, but then when you really show them the time difference on the transition, then I think it's it's one of those things where then people start to get it. You know, it's like, man, you can rail, you can rail splits all day long, but splits aren't what wins matches. It's, you know, so, again, it's one of those things where I think the student tends to emphasize the wrong, the wrong ways to go fast, and then they kind of feel like they struggle. You know, like, man, I don't know why I can, you know, how I'm shooting any faster. You know, my draw is a .90. It's like, okay, well, how many times do you draw in a, in a stage? Once. You know, and the splits at 15 mean nothing when your transitions are, you know, 50s and 60s. So Spl Splits at 15 mean you're getting laid. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So, I mean, those are the things I've learned. It, it seems like, you know, a lot of people that come to a class, that's kind of their – you know that's that's what they're predisposed to is they think that going fast just means pulling the trigger fast and that's it. So you know they're they're going fast in all the wrong areas and it's at the expense of where they can pick up speed and learn to shoot more efficiently. So okay, I've got one that if if I have to just pick one thing that 
that I that I'm constantly reminded of when working with other people. It's that a lot of a lot of shooting is a lot uh, at its core. It's a lot simpler than you might want to think it is, especially if you train a lot. So if you spend a lot of time shooting and you're working on some issue where you're like, let's say you're shooting head boxes at 15 yards in the middle of a stage, you know, and you you miss them sometimes, and you're th you're sitting here like kind of turn it over and over in your head, like, well, why, why am I missing that shot, or why am I having trouble with this? And it could be the, the fucking sun's in your eyes that day, or maybe you should change your site configuration, or, you know, maybe it was something you did with your, your feet set up, and blah, 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 blah. And you can, you can go really far down a rabbit hole when the solution tends to be like, hey, dumbass. Like, it would be what, what I'd say to a student would be like, no, like I don't give a fuck about any of the other shit. Just make sure you will have the discipline to wait until your sights line up, and then you'll press the trigger clean, and that's it. That's all you're going to do, and that's the right answer for them in that moment. Even though, I mean, the shooter wants to like go down this rat hole of all this bullshit that doesn't doesn't really directly affect what it is that they're doing, and that's it's kind of works that way with moving around or target transitions or drawing or like any individual skill you want to work on. The, the, the keys to success tend to be a few pretty simple things that you just need to really focus on and not get distracted with all this other miscellaneous bullshit. But especially for me, because I, I practice a lot, I tend to get distracted. I tend to you know, start making it more complicated than it, than it needs to be. I would agree with that, yeah. Overcomplication okay. definitely is. Except from Tim. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, I agree with that. No, Overcomplication, that, that tends to be a big thing, too. All right. Uh, any other tidbits from any of you knuckleheads? Otherwise, we can uh, we can move on to stupid questions. I'll talk about uh, some very good. I don't have anything else. There, okay. was, there was a kind of a, a second to that. It was like, or top five most common mistakes. And I think the common mistake-wise is, yeah, it's kind of, I would have to concur with what Mike said, which... A lot of times they don't understand just the, the, the fundamentals of marksmanship, how to press the trigger without disturbing the sights, that kind of thing. That a lot of guys think that they're ready for all the, the fast footwork and movement and in and out of positions and all that, when in reality they would do themselves a better service to themselves by just learning how to pull the trigger. So, um, Mike, I'll kick this to you. Do you think it's fair to say that most USPSA shooters are dog shit at, like, shooting groups? Um, a lot of them are. You know, <laughs> my, my opinion is this. All of us struggle with not jerking the trigger. All of us. So it's a perishable skill, and if you shoot 30,000 rounds a year, you struggle with it less than if you shoot 300 rounds a year. But it, it, it is the same demon to all of us. And it is something that we all deal with. And the people who are consistently winning aren't jerking the trigger like a cat trying to poop a peach pit. Wait. Oh, what? I've got to explain that for the I mean, I couldn't get my cat to eat a peach pit. I could try. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you should get out more. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Tim, you're old enough that that should not be the coolest thing you've heard in your life. Wow, Mike, you hit one out of the park. <clears throat> it happens. So this is good. So you're hitting in that demo of, like, you know, 30-something man-children <laughs> that think pooping peach pits is funny. <laughs> God damn. No, I'm, what I'm saying, Tim, is that Mike is a demo-friendly guest. Okay. You have to have transgenerational communication skills when you're going to you know, be in the presidential game. Say it makes a good president, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mike makes a great president. He's good transgenerational, transgender communication, <laughs> probably. <laughs> like, whatever. There's a few of those people in USPSA, and Mike's good at talking to everybody. Right? That's it. Listen, of the four people on this podcast, if there's a transgender person that we need to have a professional communication with, who would you pick to talk to that person? Matt. No way. 
I'm not too big of a person. I'm sorry, bro. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Whoever spoke first won. <laughs> <laughs> not good for. Oh my God! All right, so another part of this email was this guy wanted to ask, admittedly retarded questions. So he has a few here for me, and I put out a feeler on Facebook a couple minutes ago, so we could get some retarded questions for Foley, <laughs> just for fun, Mike. It'll be good. Okay, he wanted to know for me. How the fuck do you sleep at night drinking that much caffeine? So this guy, I think he's been in a class with me. So I pretty much am I'm hitting uh, caffeinated beverages of some sort all day long. And how do I sleep at night? I sleep really well. I mean, I don't sleep that much, but when I do, I sleep well. So it's like usually like midnight to 5 a.m. That's like sleepy time for me. Sometimes it's like from 1 to 6 about then, I, I sleep, and then I, I wake up, and I continue drinking caffeine, and it's lovely. He says, have you ever tried going a day without it? Um, no, not since I was, like, 13. <laughs> and it didn't work out that well, so I haven't tried it again since. <laughs> uh, what's your assessment of the different colas, energy drinks? Can you recommend one that might improve my shooting? I can. I think the best one for shooting... I'm serious about this. It's the Monster Rehab. So it's the tea-based energy drink. It's really smooth. You can drink it on a hot day. It's not carbonated, so it's not like uh, it's not kind of like nasty, like drinking a cola when it's really hot out. You're like you actually need to take in a lot of liquid. So I think the best uh, shooting energy drink is Monster Rehab. Any flavor is fine, but uh, it'll it'll give you that energy kick. Um, without kind of the carbonated uh, nastiness that you can get from other energy drinks. On a cooler day, uh, I like the carbonated energy drinks just fine, but for shooting, rehab. That's that's fair, right, Tim? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Hey, fuck you. I've tried them all, okay? I'll, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help them out here. All right, any tips for dealing with all the women that start chasing you when you make GM? It's like, um, you got to protect yourself. Obviously. Um, better have a range bag on the show, Mike. Better have a range bag full of condoms. <laughs> I, I was thinking a baseball bat. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they may not. They're not always sane women, but they're, they'll be women. And um, just just be careful. And uh, I think you'll be okay. What? And uh, you've got to reprise the porno Indian music you had on the first podcast just for one no, episode. That'd be no, 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 I'm not going to do that. No, All right, please time don't. for some stupid questions for Mr. Foley. Yippee. Will, will you make Carry Optics a recognized division for level two and three matches? That's actually not that stupid of a question. No, that's, 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 that's not a stupid podcast. question, but I'll answer it anyway. Uh, yes, that, that's the plan. We need we need to make uh, make this thing work. We need to make it make a go of it. And that, if that means getting the tweaks done on the equipment rules or whatever first, that's great. But we need to go ahead and open it up. Uh, I speculate uh, that there will be a level 3, 4, or up carry optics match coming soon. And I'll just leave it at that. This, this next guy, this fucking asshole, asked about making the activity fees worth it for a local club. But that's not a stupid question. I specifically requested stupid questions. That's a good question, though. That, no, that, it's a great question. Yeah. Let's, let's answer that one. That, that, that's an epically good question. The, the, the first thing that we have to do is we need to make the uh, activity that comes in um, worth the check that comes with it. And, and for one, we need to uh, give back a whole lot of plug-and-play features. We need to make loading that activity easier. Uh, we need to make uh, getting the uh, classification updates uh, uh, s sooner. Uh, you know, th there has to be value for being affiliated, and you know, the the obvious one is classifiers. Otherwise, nobody would be paying for that activity now. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there you know, there are other awards programs and incentive programs and things that have been talked about. Uh, you know, throughout not only the campaign but uh, that HQ has has had on their plate at one time or another, but for whatever reason dropped the ball and never pursued it. And we need to 
uh, we need to take we need to take a hard look at every one of those things and get them done. But um, how about a stupid question? All right, uh, what are your top beard grooming tips? <laughs> Conditioner. Your really? beard does look pretty well groomed, I have to say. It is operator as fuck. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It's not scraggly enough. It's like Beard Club YouTube infomercial type. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's not an operator beard. Not only am I a client, but I'm also the president. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, wow. All right. <laughs> Last question. When they announce that you're USPSA president, how will you celebrate? I imagine you're going to get blackout drunk, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> no, that, that comes with the first day as president. No, yeah. that'll be on the he'll be on the plane to Washington, like and drinking his limit of whatever will serve him. <laughs> Here you go, gangsta. Yeah. You know, there 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 are a couple of couple of things that come to mind. There, I, I've been asked if we're going to have a party, and 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 we may have one locally. Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, I've been saving a, a, a very special bottle of Pappy Van Winkle, 23 year old. And yes. I may open that um, after the results come in. I believe somebody else bought you well, a, a black too. I'm not really sure which. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe somebody gave you a couple of nice cigars too. They did. And uh, they are currently being kept at the right humidity, just waiting for such an occasion. <laughs> Beautiful. Jeez. Thank you, Tim. You're very welcome. I'm trying to take some time off before you got to fix all the fuck ups. <laughs> I am, am going to take a small uh, uh, vacation uh, in December, uh, but I already have uh, time scheduled with some of the area directors. Uh, I'm going to try to get read in on. Uh, where we are on some of the things that they're not telling us. Uh, obviously, there's some prep work to do, and I'll be transitioning out. I, I do still have another job until January 1st, um, and so hopefully... Oh, we'll you're not going to walk in there and be like, you go fuck yourself, Shooter's Connection? Uh, nah, I'm not going to God damn it, you're such a responsible adult, Mike. What about uh, committees? Uh, during that time, we're going to go ahead and task committees and announce some pairs. Uh, I've already got uh, a couple of committees uh, pretty much uh, tapped out, uh, except I'm not going to ask anyone to do anything for me until we know for sure that I've won the election. I've already redone all the divisions and killed all ten and <laughs> made a revolver or something. It always <laughs> I've been I've been working on your PR campaign as well, Mike. Yeah. Doing some ads for you. Very classy. We got these these girls. Not too many tattoos. But um, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna work for you. Piercings, piercings. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's pretty tough to find, you know, not. I mean, you wouldn't think like that girl's gonna be a doctor someday. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unless they're in med school, I don't know. Aren't they all? I I, I guess I wouldn't know, Tim. <laughs> All right, well, this was another productive show. Thank you for coming on, Matt. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the beard grooming tips, Mike. Oh, uh, thank you for being here, Tim. Uh, if you have a shooting question you want to send to me, uh, whether it's stupid or not, uh, go to bensteger.com, get my email address, and send, send me that question. I, I'd love it. <laughs>